YouTube, this is Cindy Young, I'm Luhu Stitches, and I'm back for another installment in my Floss Tube series. I think this is number seven. I want to say hello. I want to say thank you for coming by and sticking with me. I know it's been, I didn't check to see how long it's been since I made a video, but I think it's been over a month. And um, summertime's just a busy, crazy time. You know anyway and welcome to new viewers and thank you I've had some new subscriptions during the month and that's kind of amazing to me because people were finding my channel even though I wasn't doing anything because <laughs> uh, it seems like people watch you the first week and then things kind of taper off and you don't really see comments or anything like that but um, welcome to new subscribers and thank you. And let's see, I need to check my list to see what else I was going to do. Oh, so last time, I thought I'd get right to the giftaways. Um, last time I told you about Linda Savage who'd sent me a whole envelope full of patterns. And there were a couple patterns in there that I wasn't um, real interested in doing. And they were Halloween patterns. Um, they were these two patterns and I was... I'm sorry, I'm trying not to get glare. The lighting is all funky in here today, and I don't I don't know why I got this big shadow over here, and I don't know. Anyhow, these are giftaways, and I did a random generator, and here we go with who gets what. So for rest in pieces, right here, Cindy Lawn. Cindy, get in touch with me. Either um, I will have my email linked below. You can email me or um, you can contact me on Instagram at Luhu Stitches or I probably email's the best because it's the most private. So anyway, Cindy Lawn, rest in pieces. Actually, I don't want you to rest in pieces, Cindy, but. I like your name. <laughs> Anyhow, um, and then spooky welcome goes to Sheila Bell. So Sheila, get in touch with me. And I will get this off in the mail to you ASAP. Along with, both of you get three um, skeins of DMC 310 to get you started on your projects for Halloween. So hopefully that comes in time for you to get something done before uh, Halloween. But... If not, you can be like me and just keep working on it until you get it done one Halloween. That That's usually what I do. Anyhow, uh, okay, so I'm going to jump right into my whips. Um, I've kind of, um, I'm a real uh, touchy-feely stitcher. <laughs> I stitch seasonally, and so I know fall's coming up, and I started this um let me get out the card here it's um country cottage needleworks september cottage i started this last year cottage of the month and i think i'm gonna get it done <laughs> for this year and i'm kind of excited i have um a little i'll show you next time i have a little doll that i painted years ago that I'm going to set this up with and it's probably a little birdhouse and everything like that. Anyway, so I think I'm going to get this done. I'm kind of excited. I've been working on it. Um, I It's uh, challenging to work on pieces that I haven't designed and finding time. So I kind of have this mentality. I work on my design pieces during the day. And then I work on this stuff in the evening. Um, but some evenings I'm kind of tired. <laughs> oh, and then um, this is a little ahead of the game. Uh, I found some really cool fabric at my mom and dad's house. Um, my sister and I went through my mom's quilt room and there was this apple fabric in there. And I said, can I have that piece? And my sister's like, yeah, sure. And uh, so anyway, I think I want to somehow, I don't know, do something, probably something kind of Priscilla-fied 
with that and and this uh, cross stitch piece. So pardon the pardon the crinklies. You know, crinklies don't really bother me when people are doing it. Just to me, it says they're trying to be orderly and keep their stuff from being <laughs> all over the place. But it's a crinkle way. You don't bother me. Okay, I have been working on item A, and there she is. I'm so excited. Let me show you a picture of what she will look like when she's done. Um, I didn't pull the frame that I want to put it in off the wall, but I have two oval frames that I plan on putting Ida in one and Ira in the other. And so I just have the flowers and the little uh, fancy border to do. So um, I have found, I'm doing it in the called for, well, I'm doing it in silks. I'm not completely doing it in all the called for ones because I couldn't find them at Kelsey's, but um, I have found working, the thing I found with some of the silks is they tend to um, have a memory to them, kind of a wiggly memory, and even if I like try to straighten them out by, I'm a licker, um, by licking them or put it, you know, doing a little sponge with water, um, they don't always take that memory out. And so as I'm stitching, because I poke and then I pull up and I can't, I can't do the two handed. I can't, I've tried doing the sewing method. I just go with what I like and there are no stitching police. So that's what I do. Anyhow, um, so I do find they tangle in the back. So I have a lot of tangles in the back. So I'm, I'm showing this not because I'm such a, I don't know if you can really see them anyway, but to let you know, it's okay. You get tangles. I think what I get concerned about with tangles is some point that tangle will undo and it'll affect the front. That's what I get concerned about. But usually you get far enough in the stitching and it doesn't matter anymore. Anyhow, um, but it doesn't really affect the front. You know, I think, you know, the thing is silk is a little expensive and you get tangled. So that means you use that much more thread and oh well. So those are my whips. That's what I've been working on. I'm, I don't, I have some finishes, but I can't show them to you because <laughs> they were finishes for um, my shop and for um i'm submitting some patterns to a ma cross stitch magazine and um i'm not really sure what the protocol on that is so i'm just keeping mum about what i've submitted and hopefully i just got word back from the editor that she got one of my submissions but not the other so i need to go through and resubmit one of my submissions <laughs> to make sure it got through <sighs> It's this whole Google Docs thing, and I'm not very good at Google Docs, so I don't know if I need to call in my IT department, which would be my daughter, or what, but anyway, I'm sorry, that was total aside. <laughs> but I, I have finishes, but none that I can show you. So there we go. But, um, so at the end of July, I went down to um, my mom and dad's house. It was just me and my sister because if you recall from my last video, my dad was on a road trip. And um, anyhow, uh, we were going through my mom's quilt room, which was fun, uh, a little bit like a treasure hunt and kind of sad all at the same time. Uh, you know, just, um, I think any time that you go through any uh textile artists stash because they've passed away it's just like you see maybe what where their heart was what their vision or you wonder like we we found things and we're like what was mom gonna do with this and you know it would be really pretty fabric or something like that um she had tons and tons of patterns I could just see her her mind working like, oh, I really want to do that one, and I want to do that one. And um, uh, toward the end of, in the last few years, um, she got really into embroidery. She would embroider um, towels 
dish towels for us and so there were lots of uh, bird brain design um, stuff and dish towels and um, she bought for those she would buy the pearl cotton number eight and um, which I hate working with <laughs> but um, I inherited it all so I'm gonna figure out how to work with it I, um, oh, I, I don't have any of that to show you today I'm gonna do my segment finds with mom um, this will be an ongoing segment because there have been lots of finds. <laughs> anyway, um, but I am going to show you some of my uh, stitchy acquisitions, stitch acquisitions. Um, so the first one was at, at the end of my last video, I talked about the fact that I had ordered another Bitsy Bop from uh, Kelly at uh, That's So Kelly. And um, it's this one. I just thought this was so pretty. And I'm a... I'm a sucker for gingham. You put gingham on anything and I'm on it like that. Um, anyway, um, this is still her Bitsy Bop 1. So I can give you a little sneak peek. Um, I'm using some... So my mom had bought a package of DMC Color Variations and I decided to do a pattern using all DMC Color var Variations from that packet. And um, so this is that, and that's part of the secret. Um, if my patterns are not accepted by the, the magazine, I will be um, publishing them and putting them in my shop. So, um, but anyway, but that's from Just So Kelly. If you have not tried the Bitsy Bop, go give it a shot. I'm going to buy, I think it's her Bitsy Bop 3. Um, and she has, like you can buy pages to go in that. So the reason I would buy the Bitsy Bop 3, because now I have two Bitsy Bops, is just so I could add pages to my Bitsy Bop. And it's um, a little more cost effective. So anyway. Um, then, while I was down, um, now I've kind of mixed these up, but while I was down in Placerville, of course, I dragged my sister over to Kelsey's, and I found, <laughs> I found her Lizzie Kate baskets and I thought I got to go through the Lizzie Kate's ba baskets because I really really like the Lizzie Kate strings and um, Lynn Savage had sent me the thank thankful string she'd sent me that um, and I still need to start that I think my goal is to finish September uh, Country Cottage Needs Works Cottage of the Month, September, and then I'm going to start, well, maybe not this one, but this one. <laughs> now, <laughs> I keep saying I'm not really a Halloween stitcher, but I like a few little Halloween things around, and so I got Spooky String, and Priscilla had used a variegated thread around the O. I don't know if you can see that. I need to go and find out what that variegated thread was because it looked really, really cool. Um, but, you know, these are so small that you can kind of get away with just DMC. I sat down one afternoon and just went through each one of these strings. I've got, so my thing is, I have the whole collection of strings. Yay! Now I gotta find a cool, like, board or something to Priscilla-fy it on. Um, anyway, um, where was I going with all this? Oh, so I, I wanna get this done. Anyway, and I, I really want just that one variegated floss, but you could totally get away with just using DMC on this. And they have, she has in here DMC Anchor, um, and depending on the pattern, there's color, classic color works or weeks dye works um, threads. So you can go fancy or you can go DMC or anchor. Anyway, so I, now I can't remember, I had bought one string and I bought it, oh, I bought Buzzy String from Jen Stitching Itch. I bought that a few months ago and I, I showed it to you. But now I have all of them. I have Kitty String. 
and I have a cat actually staring at me in the um, sign glass door who's like, why won't you let me in? And she looks like this kitty right here. She's white. So we have one white kitty and we have a calico kitty. So I'm going to have to figure this out, but I'm going to have to change that kitty into a calico because we have a calico kitty. And I'm looking at her right now. She kind of has orange ears and a black face. Black. She's cute. She's the, we call her the nice kitty because she's not real demanding and she doesn't scratch things up. And, um, but moving on, I got the doggy string. And I'm going to have to change one of the dogs into a golden retriever and one into a lab because those have been our dogs. Um, you can, if you are the praying sort, you can be praying for us. We are looking at needing to put our lab to sleep. Um, she's 14 years old and she's not doing well. So that's just an aside. It's one of the things going on in life right now. Um, then I got the spring string with bunnies. I don't think I'll make any alterations there because I love that little blue bird and bunny and carrots and everything. Um, I got the merry string. So as soon as I get the hollow, um, spooky string and the thankful string done, I'll do this. And I am going to try dyeing some fabric because I really like the sort of light turquoise color that uh, Priscilla and Chelsea did theirs on. And then we have snowy spring string, which I think might also look really nice on the turquoise and snowy, kind of. Anyway, so those were, I got all the strings. Woohoo! I am stringed out. Um, and then in my mom's stash, I found a couple other Lizzie Kate's cards. Um, so these are both from Kelsey's, but I, they were ones my mom had purchased. So there's this fall. So you could do, if you have a dough bowl, you could put this, make a little pillow, put it in a dough bowl. And I found this winter basket. My mom had that in her stash. Winter basket. And please excuse me. Just a moment. Because that's the white kitty and she will not let up until I open the door. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your waiting for me. I just left the door open. That way... You know, fur people can go in, fur people can go out. I don't have to keep getting up and doing that. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> totally distracted. Um, I found this in my stash. And it's a JBW Designs Alphabet Pumpkin. And I don't know if I showed it before, but I'm going to try and get it done. It uses sampler threads. Uh, fragrant cloves, sarsaparilla, and autumn leaves. Or Weeks Dye Works pumpkin, hazelnut, and terracotta, which I think I have all of. So, anyway, that looks like it would be a fairly quick stitch, even for me. This one of the slowest stitchers in the, on the planet. Um, and then I found this really cute little Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving stuff. There's not, for me, there's not enough Thanksgiving stitching out there. And on the back, look, at, I would love to find the little turkey. Isn't he cute? He's really cute. I think I'm going to change the mouth on this guy and just maybe do some back stitching to make his mouth. Or use a lighter color, perhaps. I don't know. Something like that. Okay, so let's see here. So that's part of the stash positions. And then um, I have been watching people do this next pattern for quite a while. I am not going to start it right away. And I do want to get all the called for colors of thread, which is going to mean 
some expense because I'm still building up my fancy floss stash. I have a really nice um, DMC stash, but I need to build up my fancy floss. And I'm really taking to heart, you know, Chelsea brings up like she looks at a pattern and sees how many stitches might be in that fancy floss. Is it worth it to use a fancy, fancy, bleh, bleh, fancy floss or not? Um, so I am taking that to my butt. I purchased Cinnamon Stars. I just love this. I love the little motifs that are the smoke coming out of the house. I just love that from Plum Street Samplers, Cinnamon Stars. So um, maybe this will be something um, I'd like to try and do Stitch Mania next year. So maybe this will be on my Stitch Mania starts. Um, so, you know, I can work on getting some of the threads in the fabric. Um, I think maybe I'd like to see if maybe that would look really nice on the raw cashel. Sorry for the glare. Uh, raw cashel linen that I love so much. Um, that would look nice. And then in the mail came my Stony Creek cross stitch magazine. So happy now. Um, there's some cute stuff in here. I'm not going to do a quick, I'm not going to do a flip through, but there's some cute things in here. Um, some Halloween stuff here. These are kind of cute. Can you see those? They usually have really cute Halloween stuff, um, but I probably would never do it. Part of the reason I would never do it is my husband really doesn't like Halloween, so he doesn't want to see it up around the house. He likes all the fall stuff. So I, that's why I just do little things that I tuck in here that can really, they're really subtle on the Halloween thing. Um, and then a planned start. This is not a new acquisition, but a planned start <laughs> alongside of spooky, um, the spooky string is um, Country Cottage Needleworks, uh, Cottage of the Month, October. And I have everything all kitted up and ready to go. Real pretty. Uh, this is Witch Elt Linen 28 Count Lamb's Wool. So, which I think is really, that's pretty. I mean, if I were going to choose between that and Cash Elt Linen, you know, if I couldn't get one, I would get the other. I like the natural fiber look. And um, not so much, I don't mind coffee tea dye, but I'm not as into it. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't do it. It just means for this project, I'm not into it. Um, the September is on a Jobelin, and I, it's not, you know, actually the Jobelin's really nice to stitch on. Um, I'm enjoying that, but I'm not so crazy about the flat look of it. There's no variegation it's very it's a very nice even color which to me is kind of boring so but it's nice to stitch on okay so moving on real quick um to finds from mom I actually have quite a few finds from mom I may not get through all of them because I'm looking at the clock and I'm at 23 minutes already and I try to keep these around half an hour because it takes so long for them to download anyway so one of the finds from mom was this Aunt Martha's uh, Monday uh, week long uh, cross stitch and you iron it on to a dish towel and you it's a printed cross stitch and she I don't remember her doing these but I found it in her stash so maybe she was going to do it at some point she would got like I said she really got into the bird brain designs and then I found some of her cross stitch and she cracks me up because she would, there were a lot of them, she would have this, like a package of colored pencils. I'm like, what is the deal with the colored pencils? Well, she would, and I can't really show you because then I'd have to show you the pattern, but she would color the patterns as she did thing, you know, as she did a section, she would color it to show that she did it. And, um, she has here this cute little dimensions um, kit that she was working on. It was a quilter, a quilter lady, and it's nearly done. Oh, well, the quilter lady, oh, I guess, no, not this one. 
anyway, there she is. So I put her in my whip basket and I'm going to try and finish her. There's another project I don't have here, but I'll show you next time. It's amazing. An amazing whip for my mom. Um, another find for my mom is in the 70s, she was really into cruel embroidery. And I remember as a kid, I'm like, why is it cruel? Why is it, why is it mean? <laughs> Different spelling. Anyway, but she was into cruel embroidery. And this project that I'm going to show you is the one I remember her working on the most. And I remember the eyes in the most. And, you know, I'm pulling this out as an adult stitcher. I'm like, oh, wow, this is just amazing. And um, really amazing fabric she was working on. Um, might be close to a weaver's cloth or it's a heavy linen. But check out, oh, my gosh, she. I remember her working on these eyes. Look at them. Oh, my gosh, they're so pretty. I just love them and she hadn't quite finished it actually we found the box that this was in um, and she pulled it out and she was gonna work on it but didn't get to anyway so I think it's something I would like to finish I'm not I'm not a confident embroiderer and um, but I think I'm going to make myself a confident embroiderer. And it's really, it's different because you're working with like yarn weight threads. So I'm hoping that there's a needle somewhere. That might be the hard part, finding a needle. Um, anyway, so that was one of my mom's whips. And then she had another cute one. When I was in fifth, sixth grade in California, fifth or sixth graders go to what's called science camp. And you have to raise money for that. So my school in fifth and sixth grade, we would sell current stationery. But she must have bought that during the, this time. And she had a little start on that. Um, but it, I, he's really cute. <laughs> I found some of the current stationery she bought too. Anyway, there he is. I don't know if you can see him. She got a good, she got a start on him. Anyway, and then uh, the old practice of putting masking tape around the edge to prevent fraying. <laughs> that may be a hard recovery. <laughs> anyway, we'll figure something out. We'll make them up into a pillow or something. Anyway, so two mom finds, cruel embroidery. I've seen some other stitchers kind of working on cruel embroidery. And so maybe it's making a comeback. Um, I there actually I have more. I have more, but not today. Anyway, okay. And then a couple other things that she bought recently, um, and one was this um, cute. It comes with everything. Um, felt and embroidery piece. La Taillere de Isabel. I don't know what that means. And I don't say it. Ronde Pots. I think that's the name. The top thing, which I'm not going to pr pronounce, is the designer. And the bottom is the name of the pattern. And, um, but it's in e the directions are in English. I remember her buying this. She actually bought this at the Pacific International Quilt Festival. And so this was just a couple years ago. She just didn't get around to it. But it has, um, I think it has like a, a raw cashew linen in it to work on. So I like that. Um, and I want to do that. I think it's really cute. Maybe frame it or something or make it into a pillow. And then um, there is a, a company called Fig Tree and Company. And they make, um, they do felt type patterns. Um, that scratching here in the background, that's the white cat, the demanding one. She wants something. I don't know what. The door is open. She can go in and out the door if she wants. Anyway, look at that cute pumpkin. And you do it with felt and fabric. So I have all the felt. Um, maybe next time I'm at my dad's house, I will go through my mom's fabric stash and figure out what fabrics to use. But look, at there's a little hedgehog and mushrooms, kind of a woodland. 
Um, so pumpkin patch and forest friends. So I think you'd make little wall hangs or pillows out of these. And then Robin and Holly. That's really cute. Okay, now she's going under the couch. If she'd let me, I'd pick her up and show her to you because she doesn't look like a white cat. She looks like a dirty, I've been calling her ratty tatty kitty because she's a mess all the time. Um, and then, okay, I think this is going to be my last one. I found these cute little hedgehog hot pads pattern. I have tons of fat quarters because that's what I buy when I would go to the quilt stores with my my sister and my mom, I buy fat quarters because I'm like, what am I going to do with a yard of material? Anyway, those are pretty stinking cute. I kind of have a thing for hedgehogs, just saying. I do. Okay. Um, and then I have a couple of cool new things. <laughs> All right. So we went to the coast to get out of the smoke. And thank you um, to all of you who commented and asked if we were safe. We were. We had fires, you know, an hour or two away from us, but fortunately none that were threatening our home. So um, unlike Reading, um, which was very, very frightening. And I went through the day after the firestorm and um, the main interstate, doesn't it's not very close to where the fire was um so i couldn't really see anything from the interstate but i'd seen pictures the night before taken from the interstate so i kind of knew where to look but it was so smoky you couldn't see anything so but very very frightening and um just because you know it could be you so uh anyway but in order to get out of the smoke we went over to the Oregon coast and I forgot to bring sunglasses. So we're in Fred Meyer, which is a kind of a, it's kind of like a deluxe Walmart. It's way better than Walmart, 10 times better than Walmart. It's got groceries, clothing, camping gear. It's just like awesome. I like Fred Meyer, but I found these glasses. Check this out. <laughs> I mean, it's so nice and they were really cute. So I just saw them on the, hi, um, I just saw them on the rack like this. I had no idea they folded up. So the first time I went to fold them, they like collapsed. I thought they were breaking. And my sister's like, no, mom, look, it just, they fold up. Look at that. So I have this little pocket in my purse and they fit perfectly in that pocket. So <laughs> cool find. This is a cool find. And then another cool find was I um, um, had a weekend all to myself at my house, and um, I, ha I needed to do some organizing. But right before that, I had ordered some project bags. I would love to, like, order Mama Jones, and someday I will. Mama Jones, someday I will order a Mama Jones project bag. But I needed some inexpensive project bags. So I, and I really like these um, sort of mesh, somewhat see-through bags. And on Amazon, um, there were a couple of offers. You could get 10 bags for 10 bucks. And so I ordered some. And there, um, I ordered, like this is slightly bigger. I bought, I think I bought this one at Kelsey's. And then I have a really giant one that I bought from the container store. I'm trying to get to it. Sorry. Um, this really big one. So you can kind of, I don't know if you can tell the size. No, there we go. I got this one from the container store. This feels a little heavier um, plastic than this one. But you know what? It's still got a nice zipper on it. Um, it's still the mesh bag and it's I, it allowed me to put one project per bag believe it or not i still need to order another set of 10. <laughs> um i have a, oh, one of these market baskets that i keep my stuff in so this is uh 
you know, that's how I keep my stuff. Um, anyway, I need a couple more bags <laughs> for my stuff. I have, I counted 18 whips, but that didn't include, like, my design whips. So I probably have, and my mom's whips. So I probably have tw between 20 and 25 whips. I would like to get, I would actually like to get that down. I do not find that, personally, I don't find it, I don't like saying I have that many whips. I would like to say I have eight whips or five whips <laughs> or two whips. <laughs> um, but it, I, it is way, way fun to start a project. And sometimes it's way, way hard to finish a project. So, and a lot of times I just get, I don't, I get, it finished but I don't get it fully finished anyway however I do have some fully finished projects I'd like to show you so this is a little bit of a shop uh, advertisement right now um, I uh, coming up this weekend Labor Day weekend um, Etsy is having a sale um, you it's a coupon sale so you need and I will put I will put right here what what the code is I will also put it in my in the comments below and um, it is Etsy Labor Day 2018 all caps um, so when you go to Etsy um, check out my shop I you can check out other people's shop but check out my shop everything in my shop will be on sale um, I think I think I chose 10% um, off of all of all my stock um, so my just so you know my patterns are PDF patterns that you can download um, you'll get them as an email you can print them out you can download them onto your computer or your iPad or whatever you like to work off of and they're generally pretty simple they're for uh, anywhere from a beginner to an intermediate stitcher um, there are projects where I have used fractional stitches and a lot of my projects have back stitching just so you know anyway but let me show you three three patterns that are currently in the store that are fall related um, uh, sorry uh, first of all I showed you this last time and this is my boo pattern yes I did design a Halloween pattern but I go for cute not scary Anyway, so you got little trick-or-treaters and their jack-o'-lantern there. Um, I have a Thanksgiving with a Thanksgiving thought. Enter his gates with Thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You've got pumpkins and acorns on that. And then, now really, this could be any time of the year, but she fits well into fall. I have my Aunt B. Um hen laying in her nest with her fresh eggs so you can find her in my shop also so I will link my Etsy shop below I will type I will have the uh, code the coupon code and it's good I think through Monday um, so all Labor Day weekend you can go in and everything in my store will be on sale not just the um, not just the patterns that I showed you um, I'm gonna wrap it up um, not a lot of personal things to talk about um, so I'm gonna keep it short today <laughs> although I'm at 38 minutes this is gonna take forever to download um, uh, thank you for coming by Cindy Lawn and Sheila 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 get a hold of me Sheila Bell Cindy Lawn and Sheila Bell get a hold of me and I will get those patterns off to you along with your three um dmcs and uh be a good friend give me a thumbs up um and subscribe um what else and thank you thank you for coming by and sharing this time with me and i pray that you would have blessed and happy stitching mm -hmm.